Warning. In the stars for TV's most glittering night of the year, the National Television Awards, Wednesday at 8 on Yorkshire. It's hilarity all the way now as we thumb through the pages of Dennis Norton's second laughter file. Gentlemen, please welcome Dennis Norden. Hello, thank you. Hello, and, uh, and, and welcome to a brand new laughter file, which, as before, differs from that other program, the one that doesn't know how to spell all right. Because while this is also composed of clips that have tickled us one way or another, none of them could really be classified as an outtake. Now, what these feature are pranks, oddities, send-ups, predicaments, or, as in the case of our first bunch, the particular kind of larkiness that sets in after the directors said cut and all the actors think the cameras have been turned off. So if you'd all kindly put on your dark goggles, the air marshal here will step forward with his oxyacetylene cutter and have us out of here in no time. You, Wally. <laughs> it's metal. How are you going to hack your way out of that? Dear, oh dear, I think he's had his finger on the button all these years. Well, what are we going to do? OK, we cut that, thank you. Could have been my agent. <laughs> 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 stop, <laughs> st stop acting, the money's not right. <laughs> it's a state agent. <laughs> Selling a house. <laughs> they'll take that laugh and that clap and they'll put it on another line that was crap. <laughs> In celebrity squares. <laughs> Jug. What do you mean, lovely Toby jug? You hated the sight of it. We only gave it to them to get rid of it. Because we thought they'd like it. I think that's very hurtful. Well, I can't remember what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> About this time, I usually turn into an ape. a fortune on those tea bag commercials. <laughs> well, uh, uh, another group of our non-outtake clips came from what are known in America as videographers. TV companies over there who'll supply a professionally produced video of your birthday party, anniversary celebration, or of course, wedding day. And because so many different things can complicate wedding ceremonies, bad weather, late arrivals, Morning sickness. That's the file. <laughs> that is the file that we raided for you today. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I in American Express. <laughs> <laughs> if any here gather can show any just cause while they may not lawfully be joined together in marriage, let him or her now declare it or forever hold his and her peace. I do. No, no. <laughs> 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 the universe may then find in your own likeness. Oh. 
good times in the past. Your sickness and in hell. Sickness and in hell. I love you. I love you. And I'll love you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. We wish you the very, very best. And your life should always be happy. Forever. I also wish you a better sex life than mine. <laughs> Love. To love, to cherish, to cherish, and to obey. For <laughs> 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 the time being, obey. <laughs> As a sign of my love and fidelity. Fidelity. <laughs> I pledge that where you go. I pledge that where you go. I will go. I will go except Texas. <laughs> Maybe seated. distribute 24 keys beforehand. <laughs> the odd thing, though, was he collected back 37. <laughs> but but it, does, it does lead us, as, as logically as these things ever do, to our rather bulky file labelled Practical Jokes and Pranks. Now, on the whole, I suppose, practical jokes fall into two categories. The ones that are undoubtedly funny and the ones people play on you. Whichever, they're extremely prevalent among the friendly folk in TV land. Today is American Smokeout Day, and the American Cancer Society says that one of seven people who stop smoking for the day will stop for good. In our feature segment today, a family counselor gives suggestions for dealing with an obstinate teenager. I'm Teresa Keller. Join us for New Center 5 at noon. Have you ever been to a clairvoyant? No, yeah, mate. Well, I went last Sunday. I've never been to one before. <laughs> it was incredible. And the, the woman told me that uh, I'd been here in life before as a, as a Doberman. It was incredible. <laughs> you know, I, I went there tongue-in-cheek. Mm. Apparently, I was a vicious <laughs> Doberman dog that had to be destroyed. And I said to her, I said, uh, you know, how'd you come to this assumption? And apparently, Dobermans have got a gap between their jawline and their ear. I don't know whether they... Just no, no, I haven't got one. Huh? No. I just feel like that. <laughs> no, truly. No, turn it truly. Up. What are you doing? Truly, just try. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah. Is now on the balance beam, and he has a very difficult routine planned. I'll try to describe it to you as he does it. I believe he's beginning there. He's taking a few steps down the balance beam, and I think he's going to attempt a right leg extension. There it is. It looks pretty good. The judges seem to be impressed, and now he will attempt a left leg extension. A Perth family claims it's been attacked by a UFO while crossing the Nullarbor. Their stories being backed by other motorists and the crew of two South Australian fishing boats have also reported being buzzed by a UFO. Faye Knowles and her three sons claim an orange blob hit their car off the highway. They fled in terror into the scrub until the object disappeared. I understand you're leaving us. You're already over there. No, no, my wife and I are just moving on to the Cotswolds today. Then you'll want to visit Billingsgate before we leave town. Plenty of red herrings down there. Oh, as a matter of fact, I went down there earlier this morning and got you. Yeah. 
definitely a terrific water ring, isn't, isn't it? That oh, is that, what do you call this? I mean, can parents actually buy this and, and help teach the children at home? They can do. Um, Supervision is really the key with any of these flotation Mr. devices. Mr. Harvey. Oh, look, I was, I was calling for dummies. We were doing resuscitation yes, techniques. Very good. Mm -hmm. This is, How are this is you? very important, isn't it? It is vital. Mm. Absolutely important. And I think doing anything around a pool should be very careful. It should be totally surprised. Come on. <laughs> And the distress signals there from Kerry Ann Kennelly, who also featured in one of the most traumatic items in our predicaments file. Now, it happened in Sydney a few days before Christmas 1996, when she was supervising a live outside broadcast from a huge exhibition centre to which Variety Club had gathered 5,000 kids to give them their presents via Santa Claus. A Santa Claus they'd stipulated must not only have his own long white beard, but must also manage this really spectacular entrance. Oh. OK, folks, there we go. Look, here comes Santa out of the ceiling of Darling Harbour. He's been sitting up there, I understand. You're not going to believe this, Carrie Ann, since 8 30 this morning. Yes, Santa is abseiling from the roof of Darling Harbour. Oh no, we've got a tragedy. Santa's hair is caught up in his... <laughs> <laughs> his hair is caught in the rope. <laughs> Just rip it out, Santa. Don't worry about it. Rip it out. Okay, how do we pad here? Let's start singing. Oh, what fun it is to ride on... <laughs> Just, just turn him around for us, because we're just trying to get the angle. Santa is, Santa's now cutting his beard off. Let's get a fire brigade in here. We've got a fire brigade off. turned out to be nearer Easter. <laughs> now, our next compilation, well, that leads us even further off the beaten TV track because these clips came to us without a single word of explanation as to what they were about. So, before we consign them to the file marked psychoceramics, which is a scientific term meaning the study of crackpots, <laughs> check them out yourselves and see if you can make any sense of them. And you, and ladies and gentlemen, live all the way from George Square, Glasgow, Mr. Tony Farrelly singing memories inside a washing machine. <laughs> when right the corners of my room, you see what a color
problem is getting the birds accustomed to wearing gumboots. Uh, yes, we've struck a, well, we have struck a few problems. The particular bird we've been having a close look at is wearing a man's size 8 gumboot. We find that black is the most satisfactory colour for all the birds. Uh, no, we don't. Uh, we found that the black uh, is not attractive, especially on the female birds. Wasn't, uh, wasn't it Noel Coward who said, extraordinary how potent is sheep music? But <laughs> I am assured, incidentally, that no suffering was involved there. Not for the animal, anyway. <laughs> well, <laughs> commercial break en route now, so let's meet it with a really heartbreaking item from our practical joke file. Happened just a few weeks ago. It was young Darren McDonald's first day as a newsreader and as he nears the end of his first ever bulletin, word comes from his director, a man who in a previous existence must have been court jester to Genghis Khan, <laughs> and he's telling Darren, pad it, pad it out. There's a big story just coming through. And welcome back to Newsworld. We've got problems here. Um, we do have a late story to hand. We'll just uh, be there in just a second. Uh, while we're, we're doing that, I'll uh, sweat it out a little bit, and uh, I'd tell you a joke, except I can't think of any. Um, <laughs> this, sport. Well, this is certainly a fine thing. We've got lots of um, stories for you in Newsworld tonight. Certainly hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I don't know what the story is, but um, <laughs> hopefully our producer will be there in just a minute. Certainly hope you're enjoying Newsworld. I certainly am. First night. Wonderful. I'll be back with you for the rest of the week. Um, there's also lots of uh, things happening after news world with news overnight, the NBC Today Show, followed by CNN. <laughs> How are we going with the story? Excuse me. Yes. We're just running on a story. Um, I believe that the Pope's just been shot, so you just hang on and just hand it over. <laughs> okay. It appears that um, it appears that uh, the Pope has been shot at this stage. I don't know any other further details. However, here's the story now. <laughs> and we're going to have that story now. Um, excuse me for just a second. Hello. Oh, sorry, mate. We just haven't left them yet. Don't worry about it. You're not on air. <laughs> the sun, Honda's world-beating solar car is so advanced it's not available yet. But then a few years ago, the same could have been said about our revolutionary VTEC petrol engine. Technology you can now enjoy in the new Civic VTI. Linda's an office manager. She's got one thing on her mind. Morning, Linda! The price of supplies. Hey, Linda, do you like this picture of me and my boyfriend? Oh, this is all wrong. She can relax. She knows she gets great value at Staples. Focus on other things. Linda, Linda, Linda! Low, low prices on over 6,000 office supplies. For low prices every day, Staples, the office superstore. Newspaper tomorrow. UFO landings reported all over Britain. 
but officials remain silent. Is it the greatest ever cover-up? Are aliens already among us? Alarming stories that must be told now. Only in The People Tomorrow, The People Paper. Hi, Rob. I just thought I'd remind you of what you're missing out on. What you could never resist. What you could have whenever you wanted. You know it's the best you've ever had. Surrender to the heavenly honeyness, nuttiness, and flakiness of Kellogg's Crunchy Nut Corn Flakes. Kellogg's Crunchy Nut Corn Flakes. You'll be back. Guaranteed golden honeyed nuttiness and a money-back guarantee that says you'll love the taste. So go on. You'll be back, but not for your money. Fluffy middle, real Milky Way chocolate. Perfect. If you got a bad altitude problem. I can take him to schools or any kind of functions like that, and let people come up to him and. Uh, they can pet him, they can love on him. Uh, it's just, it just helps us get to the, to the kids, tell them that they shouldn't use drugs. What do you say Pedro is just a little nervous about his new surroundings and should settle down soon. We're still hoping to use him for visits to area schools. They're not conventional pets, though, are they? They're not conventional pets, no. I, is, is beekeeping agriculture? Is it an art? Is it a craft? I don't know. It's just very, very enjoyable. It must be quite difficult to remember all the names. It is. I mean, there's probably <laughs> hundreds of bees in this uh, acre, and uh, I do forget one or two of them. You're having me on, though, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Dean, you may kiss the bride. <laughs> cinnamon bun that smells uh, sort of uh, heavenly, actually. The manager of the Bongo Java Coffee House in Nashville, Tennessee, says a cinnamon bun bears an uncanny resemblance to Mother Teresa. <laughs> a customer bought the bun in October and was about to take a bite when he saw the image. The bun has been shellacked and tasted. <laughs> I've lasted a slight taste and it's attracting hundreds of visitors a month who presumably are enticed to buy a few things. <laughs> After they pay their respects, <laughs> Let's open a new file. This one celebrating the fact that thanks to in-store surveillance cameras, even the pettiest of petty criminals can now become a TV star. Now, that was certainly so with Michael Stokes, a small-town security guard who put a plastic bag over his head 
and entered his local TV and video store for some, what you might term, after-hours shopping. What he neglected to do was make sure the eye holes were actually in line with his eyes. <laughs> A few minutes later, Stokes returns to the store with a flashlight and new eye holes. This time, pay dirt. The University Mall security guard leaves with $1,600 worth of electronic gear. Despite his perseverance, Stokes was arrested. Yes, somebody here recognized that he was wearing his security uniform in the video. <laughs> Certainly no mastermind. He got an extra six months for not fastening his seatbelt on the getaway car. Well, it's a little-known fact that, thanks to programmes like this one, every major city in the world now has armies of TV crews prowling the streets with hidden cameras, all on the lookout for saleable pranksters or eccentrics. As a result of which, we've recently assembled a file labelled Assorted Nuttiness from All Over, a sampling of which we offer you next, beginning with the cityscape that greets you on the approach path to Los Angeles International Airport. inaugural speech accompanied by his scene-stealing son. Our priority must be to reduce the violence. I'll place a much greater emphasis on stricter enforcement of the law, to reverse the growing trend of ever-increasing tolerance for law lawless behavior. And this interviewee's dentist has just given him nitrous oxide, better known as laughing gas. What do you want? We want to know if you buy this what? <laughs> he wants to know. He wants to know why I play sports. Why do you play sports? Uh, me? Yeah. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> Have you ever played any sport? <laughs> no time. That's <laughs> wonderful stuff, that nitrous oxide. In the old days, they let us administer it to studio audiences. <laughs> Talking of which, and you'll see the relevance shortly, one of the most agreeable items in our oddities file was contributed by the distinguished American comedian, writer, composer and talk show host, Steve Allen. Now, after one of his weekly shows had finished, he spotted something in the empty auditorium, so he had the cameras turned on again, and what happened next, he played back to the following week's audience. Ladies and gentlemen, the show officially is over. <laughs> you noticed that made a particular hit, apparently, with one 
Chartman, who was seated back in this part of the house. A long, difficult evening. Everybody's gone. And uh, just see if I can get back in here. I know. I'm hoping to sleep. It's a one-hour show, but we do these on tape, so they tape. Uh, they take several hours. Did you have a long day today before you got here? I waited a couple hours. Waited a couple hours to get in? Yeah, I got here at 4.30. 4.30? What day? <laughs> this day? This day. How can you be so damn sure? Good <laughs> Van Winkle, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Just for the record... I don't know when the record is being... What is your name? Harry. Just Harry. <laughs> Sleepy Harry, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you recall just at which specific part of the show you dozed off? No. <laughs> Do you remember any of the show at all? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. It's more in my mind, too. Well, Harry, you've been, as, as they always say on television after they've hideously embarrassed somebody, you've been a good sport. And we have a little prize for you. It's a two-week all-expense cruise on a torpedo, Harry. <laughs> I don't know to get off, but you've been a very good sport. How will you get home tonight? Home by bus. And uh, what bus do you get? What time is it now? <laughs> Uh, well, sorry, it's the last bus. Go back to sleep, Harry. <laughs> Steve Allen and the guy really wasn't a plant, confirming yet again the old television adage, truth is stranger than fiction and game shows are stranger than both of them. Something else we now demonstrate with the two items taking us into the next break. One of them comes from that timeless classic, The Price is Right, but the first brings us the opening title sequence of a pilot game show no network put in a bid for. We can only pray Channel 5 isn't watching. <laughs> I always tell my son, Nelson, that he just spends too much of his money buying presents for my future daughter-in-law. This is Mrs. Sarah Cassis, and this is her wonderful son, Nelson, who proposed to his fiancée, Vera Valab, on May 22nd, and will walk down the aisle with her on April 16th. The first thing I'm going to bring over to their house is my fried chicken, because my son will start waiting on Mona to learn how to cook. 
This is Mrs. Evelyn Harper. And this is her baby boy, James, whose heart was stolen by his fiance, Mona Tellis. They will become husband and wife next June 18th. First, you fall in love. Next, you get engaged. And then it's time to meet your mother-in-law. <laughs> $720. All our bids are locked in. Good luck to you all. Our prize, $799. Mary Reed. friends. Home pride sweet and sour sauce. Cooks great in the oven and takes no time at all to prepare. So simple even Sassanas could do it right. <laughs> <laughs> Just like your favourite Chinese restaurant. Brilliant. A perfect sweet and sour or as we see it in Scotland a number 32. <laughs> Home pride cooking sauces. Authentic flavours from all around the world. Also available in Edinburgh. You know, some people say that I invented cookery cards. Well, together with the Mail on Sunday's You magazine, we've reinvented them. In my new Great Dishes of the World, there's an easy menu each week. New recipes. And I even show you some of my secret shortcuts. Look at this fabulous Moroccan chicken. It's so easy. You'll love it. This Sunday, start collecting Robert Carrier's new Great Dishes of the World cookery cards in You, only with the Mail on Sunday. I've just fallen in love with a shampoo. New L'Oreal LV. Now even fine hair can have more body. Here comes the science bit. Concentrate. L'Oreal has duplicated ceramide, one of the hair's natural strengtheners, creating ceramide R, which penetrates the hair, rebuilding its strength from within. For stronger, thicker, fuller hair, wash the strength back in. L'Oreal LV shampoo with ceramide R. Because it's L'Oreal, and I'm worth it. Lemon. Lipsticks look great when you first put them on, but after a while they can leave your lips feeling dry. So can you have long-lasting colour that cares? Tests reveal that a leading skincare expert has a new lipstick. 
whose formula, which combines moisturisers, pigments and colour enhancers, locks moisture in and colour onto your lips. So your lipstick lasts hour, after hour, after hour, and your lips feel soft. And the name? Oil de Vile. Colour Moist Lipsticks from their new colour collection. We can prove long-lasting colour can care. Open a bag of Walker's Crystal Snacks and you could find one of 16 million prizes. Like five quid. A signed CD. Or a Spice Girls jacket. Or 100 grand! Yay! Or a crisp. <gasps> Gary! Yay! Back to our videographers for Janine and Paul, who chose to hold their wedding under the blue skies of sunny California. Hi. I uh, love you. It's raining. I know it's raining. Uh, there's probably a lot of people we want to kill right now. <laughs> But we're doing fine. Uh, we're going to get this thing done. Janine, it'll be fine. We're all having a great time. If she still marries me, we're set. I mean... what you expected at all, but it still, still is a very special moment. I've talked to people who have been to weddings for 20, 30 years, and they say, this is the only one they're going to remember. How a catered event suddenly turned into the Poseidon adventure. Well, more mangling of emotional nerve ends now with a selection that underlines two paramount rules of television practical jokes. One, it'll always be your closest and most trusted colleague who drops you in it. Two, when all else fails, stitch up the weather forecaster. Scattered showers, a possibility down to 55 degrees. And coming up tomorrow, it will be again a considerably cloudy day. <laughs> has nothing to do with my forecast. Thundery with a high near 70. A consonant, please, Carol. C. A vowel. That is E. Uh, another vowel. A vowel. I. A consonant. Hey, huh? it's Ma. She's coming home tomorrow. Oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, it's um. Do you know um duck doo doos? Duck doo doos. They get really, really hot. You can feel the heat coming up off. Oh, don't no, make That's me. Go on, feel, feel the heat. No, I can't. You put your hand over. You can feel the heat. No, I can't. You can't feel the heat. No, I can't do feel it. Feel the heat. Go on, feel no, it. No, it does not. Oh. potato chips, huh? You suppose I could have one? If I give one to you, 
I have to give one to everybody else. Uh, into that every night in the newsroom with you. <laughs> if you, you give one to me, you have to give one to everybody else. I don't think yes. so. You never give one to me anyway. Peter is <laughs> Whatever that means. Hurricanes in the second season <laughs> Can you hear me, love? What's your name? Kawa. It looks like you're going to get a day off school. I don't think there's any internal injuries. Okay. Cycle 2KJ. Got a 40 year old female. Massive hair injury. Need two ambulances. One for the patient, one for her hair. Cincinnati Christmas in downtown continues Wednesday with a look at the holiday spirit at the Westin Hotel. And we'll even sneak a peek at some of the ugliest dogs and some of the best looking men. Jerry, I'll take the men, thank you. And I've got the dog. <laughs> Excuse me, Mary Margaret. I mean, you know I love you dearly, but uh, who died and left you a penis, huh? Oh. <laughs> all right, all right, look. I hate to agree with them, but listen, women are not allowed at a bachelor party, all right? It's tradition, and as you know, you start fooling with tradition, the whole fabric of our society will fall apart. All right, right. fine. Check out that at you, who died and left you a penis, you know? Thank you. Have your pinky little party. I'm going over with the girl. I'm going to play it. was a lady called Susie Plaxon who was obviously evening up the score a little. <laughs> now, you know, when I was at school, some of my classmates possessed certain minor physical talents I envied to the very core of my being. There was one, for example, who could make rude noises with his armpit in the swimming bars. <laughs> Another one had a gift for rolling up his eyes till only the white showed that was guaranteed to empty any room in 20 seconds. I used to think, why can't they teach stuff like that? New things to do with parts of your body. <laughs> so you can imagine how chuffed I was to find that Russian television has a weekly half-hour series that's devoted to nothing but those life-enhancing skills. <laughs> Take Vanya. Vanya is one of the program's regulars. He makes it look so easy. <laughs> Ah, now if I could do what Grigor does, I don't think I'd ever be bored again. <laughs> Someone now from their All Winners show. Arena, the human cutlery drawer. <laughs> Service for six. <laughs> then, alternatively, she becomes a really firm flat iron stand. <laughs> Theodore now, a local favorite. But when it comes to Slavonic corner drinking, southern area champion. <laughs> It's a beautiful movie. <laughs> Come on, Theodore. You can do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he has. 
До свидания. And a real crowd pleaser here. Dimitri. Now, how Dimitri discovered he could do this, I simply can't imagine. a real talent. <laughs> Never mind stars in your eyes. You watch young Dimitri. It's icicles in your jeans. useful trick in some provincial hotel rooms. Anyway, I've been asked to say to you, please do not try any of those at home. Someone else's place. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Onward then to the file labelled commercials, which originally we divided into genuine commercials and spoof commercials. But these days, it's getting so hard to tell those apart, I wouldn't be surprised if the three specimens we picked out here aren't genuine products at all. Has this ever happened to you? Hey, taxi! <laughs> Why, you? A perfectly good day ruined, right? Wrong. Not with Ronco's new shower in a briefcase. $15.95 to shower in a briefcase. Box 311, Bunting, New Brunswick. It started with a forehead you could show slides on. And in a few years, my friends started calling me cue ball. But look at me today. I'll bet you wouldn't even guess this is a toupee. But it's just one of the toupees I can wear with new Convertitube with the patented Velcro implant method. Let me show you how it works. You see, underneath this toupee is a sheet of Velcro which has been surgically implanted into my scalp in much the same method that is used for transplanting hair. Sure, it was painful, but so are hair transplants. And if you're going to go through all the pain and expense of transplants, why be stuck with just one hairstyle when you can have so many choices? It's so convenient. Just pop on one, and you're ready to face the day. Convertitube has a nighttime look, especially for you. You can go from businessman to mod swinger. And there's even a punk rock mohawk model. And once you've chosen your toupee, that toupee will stay on, because Convertitube's patented Velcro method stops embarrassing toupee slippage. And if you act now, we'll add at no extra charge these discreet Velcro eyebrow implants. Only one National Express service gives you personalized shipping to any part of the country around the clock. We'll do it ourselves, we'll do it on time, and we'll do it dirt cheap. I need these taken to Cleveland. I'm going. I'm wired. My car's tuned to a T. I can be in Cleveland in five or six hours. But that's a thousand miles away. Sure, but I can the lights. Don't, don't you have a plane? A plane? A plane? <laughs> we don't need a plane? No. <laughs> 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 Miami. Welcome to Miami. Wait, I'm going to Cleveland. Where's the speed? I can only be there. Take it be there. Joey! Hi, you guys. Hey. Welcome to Houston. Thanks for the back. Welcome to I wonder how many courier services recognize themselves there. Well, we, we haven't run out of files, but we are running out of time. So, with the assurance that regular cock-up service will be resumed as soon as possible, let's move to our last compilation. And as we spent so much time showing various nastinesses taking place on live television, let's close the laughter file with a few of the nicer things that have happened to TV people on air. And all you need to know about the first clip is that the two of them are married, and this was his very first intimation. You're putting a bit of weight on? Yeah, pregnant. 
Oh, right, I see. Now, it's going to be generally clear overnight, and tomorrow, with a little breezy, it's going to be an absolutely fine day. Make the most of it, because the rain's coming back by Wednesday. That's it from the big table. Thanks for your cup. Pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> and here now, unofficially, are the numbers a lot of people have been waiting for. The winning numbers in tonight's Lotto 649 draw, they are 7, 8, 31, 35, 37, and 41. The bonus number is 42. The winning encore number is 5, 7, 8, 3, 7, 6. We hope somebody out there won something. I won two dollars. <laughs> we know he didn't, anyway. <laughs> it's all sports, but I do have one more news tip, right. and I think, why don't we bring in Jerry over here? Let me see if I can clip the microphone on him. Play some music I, or something. Are we still on the air? I don't know what's going on. Why don't you at least hold this and maybe I can put this on for you. <laughs> Everyone, this is Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> my voice. Oh my god. Since I've met you, maybe you can like this person. I'm a patient. I want to spend the rest of my life Next Saturday at 9, don't miss another audience with Freddie Starr. Next tonight, Clint Eastwood is The Pale Rider. In a presentation of WQID TV5 News and Public Affairs Department. Fortune Book Free Recording. Fortune Book Free Recording. It's been hailed as this year's wackiest comedy, not starring Jim Carrey. Coronation Street, a story of life, love. First of all, I thought it would run for a few weeks. I didn't. Never in my wildest dreams I think it would run for 25 years.